Today, let us explore 15 differences between a rich and a poor person. I believe by the end of this video, we shall have understood how to fix our minds, how to align our thoughts towards financial freedom and success. It is Albert Suiza who says, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. Therefore, provided you enjoy what you do, eventually you'll be a successful person. It might take years or even decades, but happiness in whatever you do will lead to success. Before we start, please take a few seconds to subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Let's get right into it. Number one, mindset. What is the difference between a mindset of a rich and a poor person? Listen to this. A rich mindset or a rich person possesses a growth mindset. These are people who see opportunities as the rest are seeing challenges. They are able to see opportunities amidst so many challenges in the society. Okay, what happens to the poor person? These people have got fixed mindsets. With a fixed mindset, you have got limited opportunities, limited possibilities. Therefore, for you to propel wealth, for you to propel financial success, you need a flexible and growth mindset. Number two, financial education. What is the value of education in creating wealth? There are so many arguments and debates on uh, what education does towards propelling someone in their pursuit of uh, creating wealth and financial success. This is what I'll say. The rich prioritize financial education for three very important reasons. The first reason is to seek knowledge on investing, managing money, and wealth building. What do the poor do? They have limited access to financial literacy. Therefore, they cannot make proper financial decisions. Therefore, Never stop learning if you want to be financially successful in your life. Number three, goal setting. You need to set goals and what type of goals should you set in your life? Of course, I believe all of us have got goals in our lives. But what defines goals of a rich person and goals of a poor person? Rich individuals set clear and ambitious goals, but they should remain time-bound and realistic. However, a poor mindset struggles with unclear and limited goals. Therefore, for you to propel and align yourself on the path of making financial success, you need to have clear goals, definite timelines, and act, act, act towards achieving those goals. Number four, risk tolerance. You've heard of uh, risk takers, risk averse people, and also risk neutral people. Where do you think the rich lie in this category? Where do you think the poor lie in this category? Understand this today. All the rich people, if you look on the Forbes magazine of the richest people in 2023, you realize that all these people are in unique industries. They have got unique brands. So why is that the case? It's because they are risk uh, takers. But they don't just take risks. They are, toler they are tolerable in terms of the risk they take. Therefore, as a rich person, you should be able to take calculated risks and understand the rewards that come with the level of risk that you've taken. 
while on the other hand a poor mindset will not take risks and they'll avoid a potential opportunities in that scenario. For instance, let me uh, juggle your mind in what happened during the COVID-19 pandemic, something that was so unfortunate and uh, affected so many people globally. As each and every person was protecting their lives, was leaving their job places, was under quarantine, there are so many people who made a lot of money. But at the same time, there are those who suffered financial tantrums. Why is that the case? There are those who saw an opportunity in that pandemic. There are those who saw misfortune in that pandemic. So you have to align yourself on the right channel despite the circumstances of life itself. Number five, saving and investing. There are so many debates some unending debates on if you have to save your money, invest of your, uh, or, uh, your money, or just earn and consume all your money. But I'll say this, and uh, my advice is borrowed from what uh, I heard Robert Kiyosaki saying this morning. He's a very renowned author of so many books. He says, a rich mindset invests to grow wealth. A poor mindset saves and this limits their growth possibilities and opportunities. Therefore, for you to be able to attract wealth, invest money. And you don't need much money to start investing. You need the culture, the mindset, and the direction of investing money. You can start with $100. You can start with $20. You can start with $1 million dollars but just start as Vusi Tembequayo advises each and everything relies on our ability to start therefore stop procrastinating and just start number six spending habits what differentiates the spending habits of the rich from those of the poor listen to this the rich focus on strategic spending habits, while the poor engage in impulse buying. Where do you think you fall in this category? Are you that person who gets out of the house, gets to the market, gets to the mall, gets on the streets, and just decides to buy something before the, because you loved it? That is the mindset you have to stop. Only buy when it is appropriate to do so. Only buy when you are budgeted to do so. Only buy or get anything in your life once it has been already planned in your own life to have it. That will help you. That will help you to save money, but at the same time, align your thoughts and efforts on what is important in your life. Number seven, time management. It is a, an old cliche already when the people say time is money, but it has held all through time because it still makes a lot of significance today. What you do with your time will determine what you get at the end of the day or even the season. Few few years ago, I was surprised when Elon Musk admitted to working and resting and staying in his office for most or better part of his day. This is a billionaire admitting to staying in an office setup in their own working environment for better part of the day. What do you do with your time? The rich consider time as a very valuable instrument of investment. They, they therefore strategically plan their time to meet profitable ventures. The poor will struggle with the time management. You wake up at 7 because each and every person wakes up at 7. 
you go to job at 8 because you have to report to 8. You leave your job or your office at 5 because each and every person is leaving the office at 8. You sleep at 9 because each and every person has been dictated to sleep at that time. That is a slow mentality. That is a poor mentality. Be unique. Understand your time and understand how you can leverage your time as an asset towards propelling yourself to financial growth. Do you know, this is a very sad fact, if you sleep for eight hours each and every day, by the time you get to 30, you'll have slept more than a third of your entire lifetime. That means if you sleep eight hours each and every day, by the time you get to 30 years, you'll have slept for at least 10 hours, 10 years of your life. Think of it. I think that will make more sense to you. Networking. The power of networking. You can't do it alone. The rich understand the importance of creating important networks. And I don't just mean any network. Important, significant, and timely networks. You have to build valuable connections. And in the current world setup, don't limit yourself in your own location, in your own country or even continent. Create global networks. You need a global niche, a global market for your goods and even services. Therefore, network. The poor, on the other hand, have limited access to potential and influential networks. You might be selling groceries, but do you have links to the farmer who grows those tomatoes, those oranges? Do you have the links? Do you have links or an app that can link you directly to the customers or you just have to wait for them to come and, and buy from you at your grocery store? Create networks. Understand how the entire supply chain works. Where do I get my product or my service? And who are my intended customers? How do I reach them? You can only do that by creating influential and valuable networks in your life. Don't have a poor mindset in that case. Number nine, ownership and employment. So many people have had a very long discussion on whether you can actually or really become wealthy through employment. What do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section. But this is the saddest truth. The rich seek ownership through entrepreneurship. What is entrepreneurship? The art of just starting. The art of creating. The art of owning. That is entrepreneurship. While the poor will primarily rely on employment. Think of this. Let's take uh, a quick example of the Walmart supermarket. One of uh, the mega businesses in the world. It has got so many branches across the world. Do you think the owner of that retail store makes less money than the employees in that retail store. The shareholders in that retail store, how much do they make in terms of dividend payout in, 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 in reference to the employment salaries that are paid each and every financial year? Think about it. Therefore, if you want to make more money, have an entrepreneurial spirit. Start, create, develop. Don't work for people. Work for yourself and have valuable people, 
people with expertise and more skills than you to support your entrepreneurial journey. So that at the end of the day, you're not just a self-employed person, but you are an entrepreneur, a person who starts, develops, and grows. Number 10, debt management. This is a very complex discussion. What is the value or importance of debt in your life? Do you think you should be indebted as a poor person or as a rich person? The rich are able to use or leverage debt towards their investments. So this simply means debt is not a bad thing. Think of this. Most countries are indebted, but are they poor countries? Not really. They understand how to leverage debt towards their own investment opportunities. The poor, on the other hand, will struggle with accumulating debt without a plan to manage it effectively. Think of this. What do you do each and every time you get money from a friend, from a relative, from any person? What do you do with that money? Do you sit down and plan on what that money is intended to do? If you don't, then you cannot properly manage debt. Therefore, I advise people to take debt, but at the same time understand what is the purpose of the taking that debt, but at the same time, how do you effectively manage the debt to ensure you are still aligned on the, on the journey or on the pursuit of financial freedom? Let's proceed. Number 11, resilience. How resilient are you? In a world of great opportunities, great potential, great networks, we are talking of a global market, global village. How resilient are you? Are you ready to work so hard and join the 1% that are controlling the world? Are you ready to outperform the people who have been working on their own ventures for 20 years, for three decades? Are you ready to compete with a new technological world whereby each and everything is integrating technology to leverage on productivity and also on output? Are you ready to do that? So you need resilience in each and everything that you do. So, what do the rich do? The rich demonstrate resilience in the face of failures and setbacks. You, can all, you cannot always be successful. At times, you will fail. But as I said yesterday, you have to fail forward. The poor, on the other hand, will struggle with short-term thinking. This is, this is somebody who fails and fails backward. Never allow yourself to fail backward. Always fail forward by being resilient and understanding that setbacks are part of the path of success. Unless you meet new challenges, there will be no new opportunities. So embrace challenges and let the opportunities come afterwards. Don't be in a comfort zone. Number 12. Long-term vision. What do the rich do that the poor do not? The rich focus on long-term financial planning. And this helps them secure their financial future. Think of this. We are in a, an, in a fast tracked world. Each and everything is moving so fast. And we are often told to catch up. But how do you plan your life? Do you view each and everything in the short term or in the long term? For those who go to the gym, you understand that uh, for you to have sure and certain progress at your gym schedule, you need at least six months. That gives you a view of a long-term impact or effect you need to do in your body 
or on your body. Those who understand how to start and run a business, you, you understand you need at least three years to break even in most businesses. I started my own online freelance company in 2019. This is four years down the line. Have I given up on growing the company? No. Have I stopped because I've achieved what I wanted to achieve? No. Am I still experiencing challenges? Yes. Have I break, uh, broken even? Yes. But at the same time, this simply means you cannot stop going. You cannot stop doing what you have to do. There should be a way to look to have a long-term vision. Where do you want to take your entrepreneurial journey? Where do you want to take your job opportunity? Who do you want to be in 10 years' time? In 15 years' time? At your retirement? Who do you want to be? And what will be written on your epitaph? long after you. That is how you should be able to plan and have an outlook of your life. Think beyond yourself. Think beyond your own life. Who will you be? What will be left of you? That will give you a long-term vision and it will shape you or sharpen your thinking towards financial success. Be a rich person who has a long-term view of each and everything. You might face a challenge today, but that does not guarantee there will be challenges tomorrow. Therefore, learn. Number 13, giving back. The rich have got dedicated and continuous philanthropic programs. Remember, we are in a multifaceted world whereby you're able to meet so many people at different levels of their growth. You have the upper echelion in the society. We have those who are below the $1 living standard. We have the middle class who are the majority in most countries. But what makes or drives value to those who are in the upper echelion is they are able to involve themselves in a philanthropy activities. The more you give, the more you open your arms to also receive. But what is giving? You should understand what you're giving and what you expect in return. But the rich, because they have what to give and they understand that giving gives them leverage to do more they, they, they are able to give. But the poor at times, we have fixed mindsets whereby we think by saving or by moving outside the world, chasing money, chasing dollars, chasing the fiat or the paper money, we can be able to make more progress. Remember, money cannot be chased. As people say, money has already been printed. You, you only have to attract it. So how do you attract money? from people who don't, know, who, don't know, who don't know or understand how to keep money. You attract money from them and it moves directly into your own kingdom. Number 14, continuous learning. The rich never stop learning and seeking self-improvement. The poor have limited access to learning opportunities. A rich person understands that wealth requires so many dimensions. You cannot stop learning. You have to understand beyond your own self. How do you deal with people? How do you continuously address challenges? How do you keep up with the technological world? How do you ensure that you are kept away or you are freed away or you are protected from the financial economic tantrums? All the discombobulation you see across the world is because we don't plan ahead. 
we stop learning at some point. If you keep on learning, and learning should not just be formal learning. There is the formal and even informal learning. Listening to that podcast is still part of learning. Reading that book is learning. Getting a master's degree is learning. Getting a mentor is learning. So never stop learning. It's very important. Number 15, which is the last but not the least. Generational wealth. There are various discussions on the importance of generational wealth. And listening to Vusit and Bekwayo a few days ago, I've realized that people start business for how many reasons? Four main reasons. First is to live a good life. That is lifestyle. Second is for a legacy. Legacy is whereby generational wealth, wealth comes in. Thirdly, they create business to sell. And fourth, Businesses are started to change the world. Therefore, each and every rich person understands you don't create businesses or start businesses to chase lifestyles. You create business for the remaining three other reasons. Whereby you leave a legacy, you're able to Move it or leave it to your generation, to your children. You can also create it to sell and create value for your own, for your own, for your own benefit and even the benefit of your family. But most of the mega businesses are created with a philosophy in mind, the philosophy of changing the world. Think of all those major companies. They have got a philosophy in mind beyond what we conceptualize in our small businesses or startups. Therefore, a rich person is able to pass down wealth to future generations. This creates a cycle of creativity and prosperity. Remember, you don't just start. You have to start from a certain point or from a certain foundation. People who are in families or in connected economies have got a better chance of starting, failing, restarting, but at the same time, they are guaranteed of success because they have got that generational influence of doing things and succeeding. They have got an array of mentors. They have got an array of investors. They have got an array of venture capitalists to bring influence, ideas, money, and even capital into their businesses or into their own startups for growth and financial success. To that point, I believe you have it. We have shared 15 differences between the rich and the poor. The information should serve as a valuable guide on the path to financial success. Remember this, anyone can transform their financial journey by adopting a mindset and habit of the wealthy, of the rich. Therefore, I request you to stay tuned for more insightful episodes on how best we can grow our wealth and success. Thank you. Adios.